it was clear almost immediately that no one was prepared for something like that to happen. It was like the, the Batman movie where the Joker poisons everything and within three days everybody is stinky and disheveled. It quickly became clear this was not a boil water advisory. This was something much more serious. You know, I don't think anyone had any clue what, what was going on. Um, we just knew that there was a leak at Freedom um, and that we, residents weren't supposed to use water at all. Um, of course, having reported this, uh, and living in Charleston, we were just as affected as anyone else. So the first three days uh, after the spill, people were coming to work unshowered, um, basically cleaning up as best you could with like baby wipes or, or some sort of like, you know, whatever towels you had laying around that you could clean yourself with. Um, so, you, I mean, bottled water, Bar soap and a washcloth was about the best you could do. When I first found out about the water leak, uh, I was actually in Ripley working for the day, and it was on Twitter. I, I just checked briefly, and there was a proclamation from Governor Tomlin that said, do not use the water in Charleston. Uh, and that was really kind of the gist of it. I, I didn't know what else to expect, and I was just looking for more answers, as everybody was, I'm sure, but, but it was just kind of a panic thing thinking that the water is out. There is no water, do not use your water. But it was like opening up a Pandora's box of, of issues about water, not just in our state, but nationwide. And um, realizing the, the sort of precariousness of, um, well, of water quality and the security of, of water quality. And you know, the more the more rocks we picked up and looked under, you know, the more we found. And for me, it was really an education in um, the entire ecosystem of of looking at water. What what are the political implications? Um, what are the you know there there are so many different groups who concern themselves with water. They don't all agree on, on how you look at water quality. Um, when the the crisis happened in in Flint, Michigan. It, it was tragic, but it also confirmed for us what we were really seeing, even just trying to investigate issues of, of looking at water quality um, in this state. Um, so it's, it's been a real eye-opener, um, but it also really points the way to the power of some of these emerging technologies, potentially, maybe not now, but in, in the future, um, and of community engagement and um, being part of how we look at, at water quality and, and security in our communities. But what we saw from that chemical spill is that when we don't have water, it creates a serious, serious situation and not one that's just, oh, environmentalists care about it. Everybody cares about it. Citizens care about it. Businesses care about it. It's wildly important to us and we see it when we're, we, we realize it when it's gone or when it's not available to us. That was the first thing that the chemical spell told us, is just how valuable it is. Um, the second thing it taught us is that we have to be protective of that water. I mean, we, we have to be protective of that water because so many, so much of our state, so much of, of our businesses, our economy depends on it. It is not just people who care about the environment. They care about the environment because of its value to the people that live here. Even once the water was turned on, people didn't believe the water was safe. There are some who live in parts of those nine counties in southern West Virginia who still don't believe their water is safe. They won't drink it, they won't bathe in it, they won't cook with it. Uh, they've gone to drilling their own wells or collecting rainwater or buying bottled water. But that's beginning to fade for most. And I think that uh, now that we're you know, almost two years uh, from the initial event, you know, Charleston and the surrounding areas, uh, it's not at the forefront of everyone's mind anymore, but I do think that it's in the back of everyone's mind every day.